Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'll copy link address. Put this in the Discord. Bum, 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 bum. that in the discord boom, 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 boom. all right i'm chilling in here give me one more moment y'all let me just make sure i look at the screen i can see and then let me get the image of what we're talking about up all right Right, right, right. All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Toxic Thoughts. This is Crypto Plunder. Um, I was going through the news and I stopped and I was like, yo, I got to set up and, and actually talk about this while I'm actually looking at everything. So I figure I'm just going to, that's what I'm going to be working with is just uh, working, doing work. Um live um i feel like it's a better way for me to kind of get thoughts off and also while i'm doing it i mean you get to actually listen in on my internal dialogue these this is really my dialogue in my head i'm very visual i've been doing visualization techniques that i learned years ago um from reading some books on how Russian gymnasts could see their performance of their gymnastic performance in their head and then do it over and over and over again. And when they actually performed their routine, it took less tries to do it because their mind knew what they were going to do. They have visioned the body movement. They trained a bit of the muscle memory into it because instead of just trial and error and trying to figure out what it looks like and feels like, you feel success, right? Now, it's hard to feel success when you're not really given the whole truth. And a lot of that is how we feel about money and our life in general. That's one of the gifts and the curse of being a tribesman and musical geniuses, right? It's one of the gifts and the curse because you go into the 3 a.m. room and get your head blown off with the information you get. And then you've got to kind of figure out how to function after that <laughs> because your, your worldview is now changed when you're in 3 a.m. Your worldview changed. And if you don't know what 3 a.m. is, which I know some of you won't, uh, especially if you're coming from my channel and have been here. Hey, how you doing? Um, thanks for listening. Uh, the 3 a.m. room in the Musical Geniuses uh, Discord, link is in the description. Why I'm promoting that is, and to get there, you got to get level five. Um, so you're going to have to talk, interact, you know, be real and, and, and get to know the community. Um, then you get to the 3 a.m. room and in there you see the information we share, which is talking about how we're looking at culture and our, our, our story as people and looking at the data as it is. Like it or hate it, it is just the data, right? Part of that, I've been looking at how I think about business and uh, Danye had kind of 
given me the inspiration with the movie Scarface, right? I never thought of myself like a Scarface, but when he did that, that's why I was like, y'all, blessed, man. I appreciate that because it actually triggered something in me. An idea that myself and Ty Durden, peace out, what's going on, homie? Um, my homie there, um, and oh, he's got a great show. Uh, I'll put the link in the description, man. Uh, Y'all got to check it out. He's, uh, his web series is on like season number two. It's very dope. I've got to get into it. I haven't had a chance, but I see it on my timeline. I got to. I will definitely give it a shout out to it um, in the next video properly. So I apologize because my head is all over the place. Let me get back to this. ADD sucks. Especially with caffeine. Bad move today. Um, but I got to talk to y'all because I saw the jugs. And that's why I mean the Scarface analogy. Over the last few weeks after he said it, I started seeing something. Because Ty and I were talking about it years ago. And we are talking about how when you watch certain movies, especially in the, the old tech movies, and you see how these people started these companies, they were literally pirates. Literally pirates. Like the movie's called Pirates of Silicon Valley. And it's in the Discord right now. The musical genius is in the cash lane room. That's the room that I talk in a lot because I'm always focused on business and finances. So when I'm talking and you see those posts, that's me coming from that place. Like I'm literally looking at something and say, yo, yeah, I'm sharing it. So I'm typically sharing what I'm seeing in real time, but I want to do something different now. Just you seeing a post doesn't give you why I think it's important. Or like, wow, what other data did I see that brought about a thought? But before we can get there, we've got to see the jugs on any news we get for anything, deal with anything that we think is valuable. Right? Anything that we think is valuable we have to watch the hustle that comes with it because if someone thinks it's valuable, they come in and they take it away from you. On the streets, we call that three-carb molly. It's called three-carb Monty. But Exhibit said it was three-carb molly and damn it, we're listening to Exhibit. What you see is what you get in there. Right? But Three Carb Molly, back in the day, this is probably a shot from the 80s. They want to make it old school, looking real old school, like we didn't have color back then, but it was color. I was a young kid back then. Right? On these New York streets where if you go into Brooklyn, look at the pictures of, oh, oh, yo, yo, check this out. Um, and this is on the fly. Uh, New York, York, Bronx, nineteen seventy four. Oh, I'm horrible. Sorry, y'all. Damn, I am phonetically fushed up, and I should be better. I'm from damn New York. Um, I want to look at the building. From my childhood, right? <laughs> yeah, like I didn't remember this, right? Like we didn't remember this, right? Right? I remembered this, right? This is what the Bronx used to look like. Huh? What had happened? Look at New York abandoned. Look at it in the 70s. 70s. 1974. Look at this. I used to trap, not even just the Bronx. I'm just using that's the first one because I remembered um, having to go see a family member and passing by stuff like this. Going to Brooklyn. Brooklyn. I'm even going to try attempt this. I'm horrible. B R O O K L Y L. Boom. Uh, oh, they're going to try to play rubble. Let me see if it's two L's or not, uh, two B's or not. Boom. There it goes. Look at this. Look at this. 1970s. It's like a war zone, right? Who got bombed out? 
right? Three card Monty is happening on these streets, man. At the same time that this guy is trying to hustle some people for some money to survive, this is what the neighborhood surrounding him look like. And why he probably had to go down to Manhattan and try to get some hustle and some scratch. Right? But at the time, what choice did you have, right? What hustle did you have at the time to earn some money in your neighborhood? What time did you have? What hustle did you have? You had Reaganomics and drugs. You had cocaine being flown in and, and boated in. Did we have boats? Did, like, did we have boats? That was the Bronx. That's Brooklyn. That's Queens. No, I'm just going to actually put Queens as a whole. Look at Queens. Look how raggedy and beat up all these buildings are. I don't know if this is Queens. This is just New York City. But we'll just and we'll just everywhere. 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 What did I see right here? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's by destruction. All right, no, 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 no. Let's. You want to play? Yeah, they trying to play. Let's go. I'll go with your grade. I'll go with your grades. I'll go with them. Bronx ghetto breakdown. Come on, I'll go with you. I'll go with the other colors, uh, other color photos. I'll go with those. I'll go with the photos that I remember. Look at the architecture. That's what I've been picking up from this whole thing. Being in the 3 a.m. room, seeing things, being able to just see certain images and just look at landscapes differently. What was once amazing looking cities destroyed. Rubble. So when you're in a situation, when you're in a, a old society where it's looking abandoned and beat the hell down and ruined and destroyed, when your neighborhood looks like this, what hustle do you got? Now ask yourself whether or not your neighborhoods are beginning to fall away again and ask you who led that situation to happen. What hustle we seeing? Who pulls funding from the neighborhood? Who controls the neighborhood? And this has nothing to do with race or color. Money don't got no face, except for the ones they wanna lie to you with. But money ain't got no face. It can be gold, platinum, palladium, silver. It can be the circuitry, the CPUs, the company that gives you dividends because they come up with something better and can do with something new. In an economy that flips itself wrong because nobody can survive a transition. This is the transition from a workforce economy to a beginning of an automated society. This is when the birth of computers began to destroy everything. Don't believe me? Look at the technology at the time. 1977, right? Let's look at computers in 19... Hold on, control T. C-O-M-P-U-T-E-R. Computers in 19, 
let's go a little let's go 1970 right let's give us a little wiggle room and let's do the 70 and give it a few years before it blows up right let's just do it a few years before we see all the rubble and people right IBM system computers right so now we're getting business we got tellers with 1967 Smiling faces in 1967. We're going into an IBM computer chip, semiconductor chip. Now we're going to make this portable, right? Programming language is introduced. We're going to already start our little shaky robots works. So we already have revolutions happening. Even though I'd, have, I'd like a better timeline, Google. Really, 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 though. I'd like a better, better timeline there. Let's see. Early 80s computers. So Commodore would be coming out. Apple. I know Atari. Images. Let's just do images. Because I think it's just easier to just see the visualization of what we were dealing with in the 70s. So 1970s, the Ventures. So we still had these big-ass computer, wall-mounted wall computers. This is, a, this is like a desktop now. Or less than. Now I think this is like this. Like a, I think this whole thing is like one desktop now. I don't even know. 1970s computers. Right? So these are the computers that are already out going into businesses. They were already starting to need less people to do computational work. They're already trying to get touch screens working. The jugs is everybody thought Apple was doing it and Apple was taking it from other people. To get this down to the size of this. Boom, see, right? Boom, to boom, to a laptop. This is me right here. To the laptop, my, my younger cuz, to everybody else, to now phones and smaller devices. But what does that have to do with this? The hustle. When somebody's trying, the three card Molly or Monty is really the shuffling of information, right? What is it? Three card Monty, also known as find the lady and three card, three Three card trick is a confidence game. What's a confidence game? It's an attempt to defraud a person or group after first gaining their trust. <laughs> Put that in a lot of words, right? Confidence tricks exploit victims using their cre uh, credibility, naivete, credulity, yeah, compassion, vanity, irresponsibility, and greed. So they can get you if you're greedy, right? You can lose things like land and other things when you're greedy. You can lose your money in a lot of things if you're greedy. Researchers have defined confidence tricks as a distinctive species of fraudulent conduct, right? So we're dealing with fraudulent conduct with a three-card Monday trick. It means you're getting scammed. It's a game in which victim or marks, you are a mark, are tricked into betting a sum of money on the assumption they can find the money card among three cards playing face down. Being placed face down, right? So it's like a shell game, like the shell game with the little pebble underneath it. It's the short con. It's going to be fast. The mark has no chance whatsoever of winning. At any point in the game, in fact, anyone who is observing winning anything in the game can be presumed to be a shill. Means you're basically a part of the scam itself. You're harping and hyping the game. So even me talking about crypto, I have to consider myself a shill. Right? So... I have to be careful of that. I can't sit there and say, bye, 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 bye. I have to say, chill, 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 to chill, chill, chill. Don't use your own money to do this, right? Don't use your cash. Find a way to make money first. Look at your pockets. 
Check how you're spending. Get your spending in check. Once you see you have extra money because you checked how much you were spending, then use what you find in saving money. Like, you know, stop eating out so much. Find out how much you're spending. Install an app on your phone that just manages your and tracks your data of how much you're spending. Just do something as simple as that. And then see how much you spend eating out. Then slow that down and use that to invest in. Now you found money, right? That's how you invest. Or create a, start a hobby, doing something, make beats, right? Get your beats on CD, baby. Make uh, instrumental music with beats and, in, and sounds that you control so that nobody can come back and try to trigger some, I want some of your money type beats, right? Make your own stuff. That's the good thing about MG teaching sound design, right? And even try to partner with, like, I want to partner with MG and do, take some of the sounds and flip. I already sent him a message already and, and told him what I'm going to do. I just had to get my, I'm still working on how can I put a database on a crypto blockchain? And then how can I transparently send that data or send transactions that are happening in real time into that data so that I can have a dashboard that shows myself and another person I'm making money with how we're making money in the multiverses that I'm going to be distributing content in. Using robots. What I was doing at Citibank, what I was doing at Canon, what I've done for other companies, I'm just doing for me now. Boop, boop, boop. Done. Right? So that's why I, now I'm not trying to be a shill. I'm looking at, hey, if you know where your money is and you know there's, if you know, like I know, and I've said it, I'll, if you look at my old videos, I talk about automation, especially the last few videos. I talk about automation. I talk about how automation, because I'm part of this, I'm speaking from experience. I am an automator. You automate a damn, you automate a computer by making it do things on its own. Do a keystroke and it does a set of things. I'm actually gonna set one up so you can see later down the line on how you automate screens. Because what I want to do is if I can take machines that I'm already automating and make them do something and I can distribute that code for automation to other systems. What did I just build? Especially if I can letter leverage blockchain as a database for cheap data storage. Come on. Right now we're living off MySQL, which is free, but I got to pay for that on Amazon and it costs like that's hundreds of dollars. And I've got to try to make sure I make enough money to cover the hundreds of damn dollars it takes for me to store websites. And I can't build at scale. I can't build like an idea like, oh, let me do this one idea and let me do that one idea. No, that one is $80 per damn site I want to launch. So when I look at blockchain, I'm not caring about Bitcoin. I, I mean, Bitcoin controls all the money. I know if I have my own coin, which everybody soon will have a fucking coin, excuse my language. Everybody's going to have one. Right? And if they're going to have a coin any damn way, how like like how everybody has NFTs now and how everybody has a, a Instagram page, well everybody's going to have their own coin. It's not going to be cute. Let's not be cute and clown. They're going to have multiple coins. Because that's the way you're going to make money. Like when you have automation, what what else do you have? Food's going to be delivered to you. It's already happening. Don't you see the commercials right now that uh, uh, pizza uh, Domino's is, is because, you know, they're just like, hey, I'm, we're going to we're driving bots in your robot and in, in your neighborhood because we're not going to pay to have you drive no more. We're going to create these ghost kitchens and have robots in your area just deliver multiple types of food to your zone via the food bus bot. It's already happening. I'm not pulling that up right now because I'll I'm going I'll go on an ADD tangent and I'm not I want to stay focused because I want to get to I have to work today and I want to show my work, but this is important. Before I get to my work, this is on my mind. Because I'm watching the news. Just like you're watching the news. 
And while they're trying to scare everybody, I'm seeing, because I've been here since 2017, before that, that's when 2017, I was just like you right now, if you're just new to the space. If you just bought your Bitcoin this year, I was you in 2017. I became a broadcaster for news for Bitcoin, and you'll see that with the Crypto Plunder episodes. The reason why this one is different and why I'm doing toxic thoughts is because I'm working. I'm really not out here just looking at cryptocurrency all day. I mean, I am, but only because I'm looking at business use case. I have businesses. I don't have time to... To, to daydream on whether or not this is a good idea or not. I Do I believe, do, do you believe that video games are going to be more prevalent now that people have more time and there's no jobs or is it going to be less? Damn it. My bad, y'all. Damn. Unprofessional. And, and, and these damn robot calls, I know y'all are getting them, man. That was a robot damn call. It was that stupid ass glitching out robot call. Robot call. I can program that now. It's simple. Everybody can do this shit now. Ish. Excuse me. I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to get better with my vocabulary because I was in the na um, in the Marines. My father was in the Navy. So. I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to change my energy. Been trying for the last four years when I, you know, actually six years. When you lose your job to the transition. I'm speaking from experience. Having become a graphic designer and seeing that nobody needed graphic design, I had to become a web designer. And then seeing that web design was going away, had to become a web developer. And then seeing web development going away with Wix and all the other crap out there, I had to come up with something else. Now, crypto is good, but that's only if you're thinking of it as a speculative thing that you have hopium in. And it always goes up and never comes down. Which, what stock, asset, anything. Like, even the car you drive goes down in value the minute you pull it off the lot. We go down in value the minute we breathe air. minute we get oxygen in our body, we already start dying. Right? Three-card molly. You're supposed to find the ace. You're supposed to find the gem amongst the rough. They flip it upside down. Start doing that shuffle. And your choice, you've got to make a choice. Sometimes you'll choose right. Sometimes you'll choose wrong. The reason why I bring this up is because Where is it? When you're dealing with stocks, right? When you're dealing with stocks, there's actually, damn, where is my, there was an article I had specifically. There it is. That's what I messed up. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Right here. Right? The reason why I bring up the three-card molly is you got to think that writers are con artists. I found this looking at three-card molly, looking for images. And this image happens to be on this page. That's why oh, learning, if you're trying to get SEO for your websites, making sure that you have an image and putting keywords in that image, name itself, will make sure you show up in the Google image feed and then they can pull you in for your information if it's important or not. All right? I was looking for something in the respects of a con because it saw me, the algorithm saw me heading down that path. 
It gave me a page that had this, but also gave me the information I needed. The algorithm sometimes is your friend. But anyway, like I was saying, when you're dealing with this game that you need to, you got somebody shuffling them cards to get you to pick where it is, and you've got to make sure you choose the right one, because this can be anywhere. The practice is that you're willing suspension of disbelief is in play. And writers do this. How you achieve it? Simple. As a writer of fiction, or any writer, you must pull off a con. You have to present something that tells a lie, completely made up story, without setting off someone's bullshit meter. If you want the truth, stick to nonfiction. Well, we can't call that for the news, right? Have we been able to do that since after Trump? Fake news, fake news, it's fake news. But he wasn't wrong. The news has been fake, but it's been fake since they ain't really tell us how this happened. Since they ain't really tell us how New York ended up like this, how it went from huge buildings down a notch because other people were taking over the country at the time, it was falling from grace. Right? So writers, when we were dealing with the stock market, we gotta worry about the scams, like in 1986 and 96, right? 97, Enron in 2001, which helped kick off what's going on in our market now. This began the fall. 2004, what we felt in 2004, for those of you who are here, this actually kicked it off. As you can see, a chain of events in like the mineral industry and uh, let's see, this is technology company that was coming up and then this is a cleaning company blew out money on people. So, but Enron started it. WorldCom was another huge one in 2002. Again, you can see a ripple effect was happening. I, something is happening. Right? People are not making money one way or scamming out. or Because they're, they're, they were just really just scamming out, making money, cooking the books. Tyco International. Components, healthcare, safety equipment. Health South. Bernie made off in 2008, made off. Right? So... When you have these huge things happening in the market, it can hurt you. Now, I say this, and I actually didn't even think about this, but there's another triggering event that I just saw, and that is another contagion that just happened. I, can't, I talked about it, but I can't remember it, but I'm gonna see if the algorithm will give it to me. And that is, uh, let's see, company. Scam. I think it's. I think it's derivatives. Like I said, I can't spell. Oh, let me not go with news. Let me go. I mean, not images. Let me go with news. No. No. Minus crypto. Ah. Uh, I know I'm not spelling that right. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to find the word. Sometimes you just have to find the word. How Archegos's 10 billion in losses affect your retirement. How might it? 
could derivatives cause the next financial crisis like they did in 2008? <clears throat> right? Huh? 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 They're not saying it, but there's, and I just did this on the fly, y'all. I, I did it on the fly. Thank you, MG. Thank you. Appreciate you for me being able to do this with business now. Not just how our history happens, but how business is unfolding in front of us. Using a bit of the past, you can kind of, kind of see what's happening. Right? So they're saying it. Hmm? What happened? Las Vegas yeah, bought money. Let's say you had a million. The casino gave you... Okay. Imagine you walked into Las Vegas casino and you brought all the money you had. Let's say one million. And the casino gave you 154 million to gamble with. How smart do you think that uh, that would be for that casino? Well, right now, Goldman Sachs Bank USA has 150 times their assets in gross derivatives. Right now, when was this dated? May 1st, 2021, y'all. Mm. Yo, yo, yo. Like I said, this is live. Uh, I'm not prepared i'm not preparing this this is not this is me looking at business decisions i gotta make in real time for those of y'all don't understand what toxic thoughts is is you hearing my thoughts in real time as i'm looking at something as i'm beginning to start my day i'm starting my day this is what i do how confident should i be in crypto how confident should i be in the market that's what i'm saying every day am i seeing a burgeoning industry or am I seeing a collapse? And uh, which ones are going up? Which companies are going down? Where do I need to be worried? Because I have money in both places. I've got plays in both. I've got skin in the game in both sides. So I'm not talking from one side or the other. I'm not shilling for anybody. I'm actually looking at this as a businessman like you, like you all should be. Like you have a, a social security number. You got to pay taxes. Well, but you know, if you don't want that man, it's your dog. You don't want to have to go down if you don't know how to handle the law of maritimes. Right? I'll let you go down that path on your own. But let's deal with it. How am I supposed to be trustful right now in that market? I get a... I, I have a thousand dollars. I'm going to break it down for me. Because, I mean, I, don't, I can't see a million. I can see a million... I can see it, but since we're all struggling together, I ain't got no million like you ain't got no million, so let's talk about it at a thousand. I got a thousand dollars. Yeah. I walk into a gambling casino and somebody gives me $154,000 to gamble on machines that are triggered to take my cash. Now, here's the problem. That's not actually how the game is really being played at this point because he's acting as if the electricity be of the building underneath it has been paid on time. What happens if you were gambling and as you were gambling, the machine turned off on you? That's what happened in 2008. Bernie Madoff had put, was, he had a head fund, was just a Ponzi scheme. It was a lie. He was telling everybody he had all these great assets and people were throwing money in it and he was just balling. That's what we're dealing with. So this thing is telling you that they have gambled. Now, while they have this much in, in derivatives, right? Uh, a number of other giant financial banks are also leveraging up using credit default swaps and similar to so default swaps. I don't really understand that yet, but I know 
anything like that's if they're like crypto swaps okay if they're like crypto swaps if that's where they got if in d5 that's where they got the understanding of swaps then i can see the problem with the current crypto swaps are if the asset that's underlying what you're saying you're tying the asset to so let's say you have um Okay. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually leave it as an asset class in my head. I'm gonna leave it as an asset class. All right, but we're gonna do it in how we're gonna do it in music, right? It'll be easier for me to kind of like pontificate on that because I'll be looking at it the way the music industry is and that's a better thing for my head. And plus where we are, musical geniuses, the Discord link is in the, the, the link below if you're into, uh, music and, 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 and revelations, right? So if I'm looking at music, right? I have an art, I have myself a label, right? That's a business. In that business, I have acts. So let's say like Def Jam. So I have a label, Def Jam, and at Def Jam, I have LL Cool J, I have Run DMC. Now, these are two corporations, because Run DMC is a corporation that is registered to be able to sell products in stores, and LL Cool J is a product that's registered as a corporation to get sold in stores, right? That's why they have their registered trademarks. So that way, you protect the assets underneath, which is the catalogs each album. Each album has a name. That name is a product. That product is listed underneath the company and has a SKU number. Right? That SKU number gets X amount of sales. That X amount of sales gives you X amount of profit. And that profit that is for each part of that catalog is tied to the overall company. Now, what if you sold that company's idea of its stock but put it inside another contract sub. But then what happens if all the assets, music assets, depreciate in value over time, but the derivatives keep saying that the, the appreciation is going up via calculations? Magic. <laughs> Science. Right? What if it's doing that? That's what the derivative market is. It's a bunch of magical ma math, money science. <laughs> oh, Timmy. And they magically have great grades on stuff that underlyingly isn't good, right? So if you look at, the, again, using music, do we have more racks of music happening? More and more, like, oh, do you see stores having music CD racks? No. Then do you see it being really promoted and sold on Amazon? No, it's on Spotify and everybody's streaming and you get microtransactions and it means that audio depreciated in value. You see DVD racks expanding? No, we're going to streaming. Nobody's watch getting a DVD disc unless you're just old school. You're just streaming it. Why am I getting up for it? Don't deliver it to me. That shouldn't be my break. I don't, I'm, somebody scratch it. I don't want to touch it. Right? That's what's going on now. So f assets are depreciating. Physical assets are depreciating. And digital ones are gaining value. What are our tech companies? Our big tech companies, they do have some tech companies doing well with physical assets. But the big ones are all data-based. The biggest, Amazon, Amazon Web Services. Go to AWS, look it up. You can spin up a server for $5. You're welcome. Light sale. Amazon, light sale, your keywords. Oh, oh you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm doing a, I'm talking like I'm doing a radio show. <laughs> AWS light sale right there, right? Go over here, let's scroll on down. Simple blah, 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 blah. Let's go to your pricing right here. Boom, 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 $5 a month, $10 a month. You can pop, uh, they have it where you just load up WordPress. 
right? So you can have a, your website up. Fine. You're welcome. So is it easier for me to make businesses with, I can just spin up a website for $10? Do you think more companies are going to show up or more physical things are going to happen? More magic money. They can't keep up the game. Now, let me skip to the to the money shot, right? There is actually a specific. In, in 2021, here we go, caused $10 billion in losses. It was set up as a family office away from oversight of SEC. As such, they were allowed to take tremendous bets by using a derivative called a swap, like sushi swap and data swap, right? Unfortunately, when those stocks went down, massive losses ensued. What's happening in the swap market on crypto? When the market dropped down, that was all to shake up shit. It's a trigger event. To shake people out of the derivative market of crypto. Because they know they don't need that over there. They've already got a problem they can't control right now. This is a problem they can't control. This has already been taut touted as 2008. Systematic problem. $10 billion. How many other people hedge bet on their $10 billion? A hundred to fifty they were allowed to bet fifty billion to a hundred billions of stocks, five to ten times the average, spread out amongst the number of banks that took losses during March of twenty twenty one. March. We haven't even felt it yet, folks. They're still trying to figure it out, I bet. I bet you money they're trying to figure it out. Like I said, I'm doing this live. I'm 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 looking at this in real time with you. And it it, it annoys me because again I got skin in the game on that side and I can't even touch that shite. And if a crash happens on this side of the water, that's 10 years to recover. So that means I got to worry about my assets on this side of the pond of my money for 10 damn years. What's my choice? That's why I'm like, I, I, I get annoyed at fear. Not because it's your fault. Because they're doing it. They understand exactly what's going on. And let me show you how it plays. If you use any of these companies that's talking to you and they don't even really understand the space, but they say they understand the space, let me explain it to you. There's a guy named Jim Cramer. He's on CNBC. Everybody's seen him. Bye, bye, bye. Sell, sell, sell. I listen to him. I like his show. He's very entertaining. Now, where does he come from? He's a former hedge fund manager. I read his book. That's actually what Mad Money uh, is his show. And I read his book, which was Confessions of a... Oh, jeez. Foreign C-O-F. Oh, C-O-N-F. F. Confessions of a Street Addict. That's it. I told y'all I can't spell. Don't judge me. Confessions of a Street Addict. I read that book years ago to get in, so I could start getting into the head of the market because I wanted to understand it. So you read. I read, read uh, Warren Buffett's The Snowball, and I read Jim Cramer, two of Jim, Cramer, Jim Cramer's books, right, just to get ahead for the game. So in a December 2000 interview, 2006, this is before 2008, right? Well, that's one us to keep score. This guy's on television at this point. No longer with a hedge fund. In December 2006 interview, Kramer described activities used by hedge fund managers to manipulate stock prices, some of the debatable legality and others illegal. He described how he could push stocks higher or lower with as little as $5 million in capital. Stock market was still early. It had it didn't have a lot of tech. It had a lot of old school stuff at that time. So as tech got more successful in the 80s, it had more money than those old ass companies that were failing because they were in old world hard manual labor stuff and they were in digital, hey, we got computers, let's flip this game on its head stuff. 
And that's when you see all those hedge fund managers from the 80s and 90s with those big, ugly-ass phones. Walking around with backpacks with radio antennas. Those were those guys that had the big, juicy shoe phones. <laughs> right? Hold on. Uh, cell phones in the... 80s, right? Right? This, right here. Greed is good, right? Michael Douglas. Greed is good. Look at this. All these. These are all the hedge fund managers. These things are showing you. He's a <laughs> banker. You know what I mean? This is the phone right here. All of these fat cats on Wall Street. And if you're a, 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 high, a highlight celebrity, you, you had a backpack. You carried this, like, look, with cord still. <laughs> I was too young for this, but I had this phone. That's when I jumped in the game, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying, man. This is the type of, oh, uh, they were on, uh, man. That's his world, the hedge fund world. This is what they were buying. This was, this, this was, this was money, money. $3,000 right now to even get it. That's crazy. But anyway, with 5 million capital, when he was running his hedge fund, he'd be able to push the stock higher or lower. He could dump it if he wanted to. A lot of times when I was short at my hedge fund, when I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, I would create a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures, futures. In finance, a futures contract is a standardized legal agreement to buy or sell something at a predetermined price at a specified time in the future between the parties not known to each other, a way for me to control the market. Crypto has a futures market. You'll see it on the bot later. So there's people that can take their bots and bet futures to push the market where they want since they have the money for it now. And it only takes wallets that have 10 Bitcoin in it to do it. I showed you in the video yesterday which wallets were dumping. Triggered event to send the market down. This is your stock market. These guys are in this pond now because they know, again, something is happening on the derivative side with this company. Right? Let's go ahead and just do a search specifically on that and look at the news right now. UPS losses, $10 billion. Banks losses over $10 billion. Wall Street's losses on... Dutch Bank's news, day of crisis, dysfunction, how this might affect things in the future, are, prepares for insolvencies as banks seek compensation for $10 billion in losses. He ain't got. You know what? I don't know this answer to this question. It's in my head right now. Okay. It ended up being 50 billion in losses. <clears throat> we just started. It's still calculating. We haven't even gone through the summer yet. That shit just pissed me off. I'm sorry. Pardon me. <laughs> like I said, I'm working live. I am working live. This is me looking at the business making decisions as a strategy officer on how I'm going to handle my fund. Am I looking at the crypto market yet? No, I'm still looking at news of other things I didn't see yet. It's giving me a future idea of how I want to deal with the other side of my market. Does this sturdy me up on which side of what trade? Okay. I'm, I, I don't talk about crypto because 
I think it's a great thing. I think it's interesting. I think it's dope. I think we're still early. I think four more years, like Cardano and four, I think Cardano and four is going to be interesting. That's why I'm stocking up now, because I should have bought more Ethereum four years ago when it was $300 damn dollars. But I'm also looking at, hey, there's Microsoft, there's Apple. We don't have none of those yet on smart contracts. Who's going to be Microsoft? Who's going to be Apple once we have maturity because retail ain't in yet and all of these big hedge funds ain't propped this up to be the next stock market boom of 2000. But what I'm worried about is since he hit 50 billion, I'd have to look back on the older news and see what was the initial call for how much Bernie lost. So what do we know? We know it was 2008. So let's go back to Bernie Madoff 2007. Right? Let's do that. Because we don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I do this. Go to any time. Go to custom range. And I want anything to the year 2008. And earlier. Go. No. Actually. Change that custom range. I actually want it. 2007, because I want it to that end year, December of 2007. Because he's arrested in 2008. Bernie is so mum, talks trading, investment securities, investments, trading slip mailed. A Bernie made our trading slip mailed. Hmm, skeptics ask how. Working on Wall Street. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Chronicles. We're seeing his name. Prevent fraud detection. Bernie Mason arrested. That's in 2004. So it's not. Before 2007, it's still showing me stuff that I don't want. <laughs> ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous. That you're still showing me stuff I don't want. Don't ask, don't tell from 2003. Ronnie, he must have been, yeah, must have been created then. Representative matters, clawback litigation of Bernie Sanders LLC. You know what? Let's just go between, I'm going to do something else. What we're going to do, I want to know, actually, since we know it's 2008, I actually want to know between 2008 to 2008. Go. It's going to give me January to... It missed to $50 billion in December of 2000. Okay, so it missed to 50 dollars. So it was $50 billion from jump then. Okay. So by December it was fifty billion. All right. So let's go before December. Let's go to September, right? Let's do September. Fifty billion in losses. So it was fifty billion in September. All right, we're going to go down slowly and see whether or not that number, oops, go back, sorry, and see if that number drops down. That's October. September is 50. Let's go 8. 50 billion in losses. Okay, we're still with 50 billion. Well, how, how? This is all the way to March. Okay, so I can all go. I'm t I'm not even looking at dates. I'm being dumb. So that thing's going to keep showing up at 50 billion since that came out in March. So let's go to two. 
Let's go to February. Because it seems like they got them quick. 65 billion. Okay, so they were saying it was a large number beforehand. Okay, so we're not looking at as big of a loss from him as they were saying with Bernie. Okay. Okay. So, and the biggest banks have already come out and they're saying it's just 10. All right, we can pretty much, they, they, they pretty much automated, so they'll know. So if they're saying it's 10, it's 10. That's still a lot of money to be gone, but they print money like it's nothing, so I don't know. They were able to pull off the 50. I guess 10 ain't so bad. <sighs> Damn. All right, let me look and see uh, if I'm still chilling. Dolo, if I am, it's cool. Uh, let's see what we do, what we do, do. They, they, they pretty much automated, so they'll know. So, if they're saying... Let me shut that up. I don't want to hear me. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, I'm chilling by myself. It's cool. How long have I been in this thing? How long have I been running? My mouth. One second. Let me just see how long I've been going. Because I have no damn idea. I'm just... Running my damn mouth. Twelve o'clock. I started like at eleven, so shoot, I've been like an hour. All right, I'm just gonna keep going anyway because I didn't get done. We still got more work to look at. So anyway, uh, Jim Cramer, right? On January 2000, close to the peak of the dot-com bubble, Kramer recommended investing in technology stocks and or suggested a repeat of performance in 1999. Mm. But no, no, no. Let me show you that 2008 thing. This is the important part, all right? 2008. March 2008. We saw what happened. We saw that an article came out. We just saw this, so that's why I like doing my like digging deeper into certain information first to kind of see. So what we saw was March 26, a lawsuit came out March 26. All right, so we're going to mark that in time. March 26, the lawsuit comes out. We know that if we go back forward again to January... into February, we don't see hmm mm -mm -mm. yeah, I don't see any problems until that March article comes out that they're filing so March 26 is what we know, so before that, March 11, 2008, on an episode of Jim Cramer's show, Mad Money, a viewer named Peter submitted the question, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, 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 Bear Stearns is not in trouble. If anything, they're like, more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. Right? 2008, who's, everybody was losing money. Everybody was losing money. Their, 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 the derivative cost analysis wasn't taking things into consideration. All right? Everybody was balling out of control. Period. What exactly is blockchain technology? There's two things. It's either either currently operating an, uh, an open distributed network that is processing Bitcoin transactions worldwide or to a concept that can be used by many as any, oh, excuse me, by used by any company to build their applications on Ethereum or the next level of Bitcoin next layer now 
uh, which says uh, many companies of all sizes have recognized the efficiencies of the blockchain technology and now want to harness this con concept to power their existing systems. That's me. I have WordPress. I have websites. They cost me money. Can I move them on the blockchain someplace else? What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin's right here. Bitcoin is code. Bitcoin's code is available. You can go into here, click on the source, go into how it handles coins and read the code. Download this whole thing into your own machine, execute it yourself, make your changes, create your own thing. They did that already, it's called Bitcoin Cash. And Bitcoin the other thing, and Bitcoin the other thing, and the other Bitcoin, Bitcoin Gold, and Bitcoin this, and Bitcoin that. That's what it means to clone a repository. This is a repository where you put your files inside and then you code from your repository so developers this is where all developers that want to open their source code and have people work with them on their code can build teams here and work together and then put that code out and make websites that they can give you licensing choices you can go here and get it for free or buy our other service where we install and help you with it that's how they've been doing business for years. Why are we acting like this is different? The technology just isn't just the database like MySQL. Like my this Bitcoin is a database. You know what else is a database? MySQL is a database. No, hold on. Let me do GitHub MySQL. Right? That's all you gotta do. Go to Google. There's MySQL, it's an Oracle Corporation. There's the MySQL server. And then you can go into here and... Uh, 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 see how it actually handles SQL. How does it handle authorization? Okay, let's look at how SQL authorization can work. Let's click on that and boom, there you go. There's the code of something that's all over the web. And you can do something with this, spin it up, optimize it, create your own chain and do something different with this code as well. I just showed you that MySQL that's running the web is right here. Bitcoin that's running a financial web is right here. And if we're not done, hold on. G-I-T-H-U-B. Uh, WordPress, GitHub for WordPress, and let's go to, if I want to look at the index code for WordPress, there's WordPress, but there's just the index file, that's all it does. There's no other code for that one thing. I have to go into like, let's go into WP Includes. All right, let's see how it handles. I want to see how it handles blocks. All right, boom, there it is. That's how it handles blocks. If I want to, again, I can spin this off, make my own stuff, modify how I want, make my own optimizations, change up my own security patterns, spin off my own thing. Do I have the fucking choice? You have to leave it open source. That's what happened, guys. What happened is not just hardware came down. Hardware was what I showed you in another video, which you had walls and walls of computer screens. Now it's small. You just get the code. Put it on any time, damn device you want. Any small hardware you want and, and offload your own systems and applications and whatever you want. We're getting ready to go into an application world of data. 
Web 3.0 or Internet 2.0? Well, both. Internet 2.0 and Web 3.0. This was the old computers. This was the old world. Now, we're not worried about the hardware. We've got hardware. We can buy it anywhere at any time. Right here. I'll keep showing you this. I will keep showing you this. I'm going to keep showing you this because I saw this rev. No, no, no. Hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Open a new tab. Give me C O M P U P U E two thousand and one images. This is mine. Actually, no, I didn't start until actually 2007. AOL timeline, type teams. Actually, no, that's not right. No, 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 2001, sorry. I built my computer, no, I built my computer in 1999. Yeah, I did, I had a computer in 99. Because that whole 2000 glitch thing, I was already deep into graphic design by then. And then I changed to web design after that by 2001. So these are my computers right here. These are the computers I was building. I would get a shell. I would buy these speakers. I would buy a monitor. I'd buy the keyboard. And inside there, I would put all the computer parts together. Right? My boards at the time, mother boards to... 2001. My motherboards look like this. They were big. Bigger than your laptop um, keyboard pad. They were huge. Now, the next uh, the next board the, the, the next boards are small fit in the palm of your hand and have more power. This was like two gigabytes, maybe four gigabytes. Hold on. Let's see what, what, what was the, the, it had two gigabytes of DDR S DRAM. Two gigabytes. This here is I believe four gigabytes or two or two gigabytes. I believe this is two gigabytes and it's smaller than what's in her hand. Single board computers to no, let's go four GB, right? Let's get all the single board computers that are around four GB. And they're going to see how many are all over the place. How many single board computers at four? And some of these are eight gigs as well. So that might be a four gig GB. Okay. This revolution is happening. So what I did at the time, what was the internet for me for this big board is what we're all using right now. What's the internet for those smaller computers is not the same. It's not. That's why I'm into blockchain. So one of the things that I've been talking about, if you haven't seen it, is I charted the bounce a couple days ago. Um, actually, yesterday, excuse me. Charted it, told you a lot of stuff, showed you some things there about technology. Then yesterday, we also got some bot training, right? Intro to crypto bots, so you can actually see that we were charting. Um, I was showing you how to set up your own bot, right? And then from the stream, I actually put up the bot, uh, BitSpot Gap 3. I put it up and now it's live so you can actually see its trades. And I'm gonna actually get into those in a second, but um, 
I just wanted to look at some of the news I put out um, in the Discord group, right? So Telegraph, I mean, Cointelegraph, excuse me, is DeFi products launch on Polygon, Matic, right? So we're dealing with Matic here. Matic is starting to, to get their uh, DeFi protocols, so it's decentralized exchanges and swaps and, 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 and all that other stuff. So I'm going to start looking at swaps, like especially since there's lower gas fees being on these other layer two protocols. Um, instead of layer one, like uh, like currently Ethereum, uh, no, uh, yeah, like currently Ethereum and um, somewhat Bitcoin, right? Um, we've got layer two protocols coming out that are doing well to speed up transactions and also is you know be apps on there working and generating um, revenue. But the reason why I'm talking about that is that you're looking at swaps again. So I am just careful with swaps. I'm not, I'm going to research it. I'm going to learn it. I haven't jumped into this market yet. Once I feel comfortable with it, I'll start talking about it, but I'm not in it. So I'm not going to talk about that yet, but I wanted you to see it. Some of y'all will probably jump on it before me. So there you go. Have at it. Um, I need to look into this one, chain link, right? Why is it have the potential to dis, uh, disrupt traditional finance. I keep hearing about Chainlink, especially since it's something about oracles being an oracle, which means for me, oracles, not like the company, but oracles like Delphi, right? Um, oracles in the ones uh, in the way of saying that a repository of knowledge, a person can be an oracle or a repository of information that is sh shared with the community, right? That's what they're doing. So that's exactly the same thing that they've casted and created on the blockchain market. They now have these oracles that's data stores and you can earn money maintaining the data for others or creating a data repository and sharing it with the network for other applications to use. It's basically shared databases, right? This is where some of my uh, content that I was asking last night when I said I'm trying to understand virtualization was because I'm seeing it happen in multiple levels. It's happening here in, in the DeFi market. So I'm trying to understand it in the physical sense so I can understand it in a financial sense. How do I understand virtualization inside of me? Because it makes it easier for me to understand when I see it in business. I can translate it better because I'm a very visual person. Um, let's see. A marathon plans a Texas facility that will house 73,000 Bitcoin miners. Okay, so this is what I mean when I tell you that Bitcoin isn't just about the number that you see. Bitcoin is about the infrastructure being built because the promise is right now, my machines do dumb things. I'm going to support this system because I know it's going to get upgraded. You saw Bitcoin, right? Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me show you something so that you can understand this just a little bit differently. All right, let me go here. New, let's go back to GitHub for Bitcoin, right? And I want you to look, this is how you can tell certain things. And I, I just jump because like I said, AD jumps with me, right? Releases releases right this is the bitcoin core had a release 23 days ago it's updating right in there there are 797 contributors to bitcoin they're contributing code to the overall code so how is bitcoin being made how is bitcoin being manifested it is being developed on this platform i told you about there are contributors that can all, anybody in the world can contribute. Anybody in the world is contributing right now. 797, 786 are shown right here, or current. And they're all contributing to this master code file. And as you can see, 20 days ago, 14 days ago, eight days ago, four days ago, uh, two years ago, certain things have been, 22 days ago, eight hours ago was a merge. They're working right now. That's what Bitcoin is. It's working code, guys, that gets downloaded. When you get a server, your machines are downloading this. 
they've automated the process of spinning up machines in. But you're just downloading the core code and using it in real time for the ones, for the versions that get pushed out and that the miners are signaling that they're using. Everybody has updates. It's getting updated. Bitcoin is not some mystical, magical thing. It's code that is being developed. Do you don't think these people's time is worth money? You don't think they're getting paid to support a system? You don't think that there's an economy here? In developing for this, what do they earn in developing the highest paying asset class on the planet damn near? And this isn't the only one, right? I'm just choosing this one. If I do bit, no, no, if I do get hub eth ethereum you have 68 core people here less people still developing updated eight minutes ago Are their time not important? Are they not getting paid to maintain something? Yes. Developers can and do get paid by the consortium. Vitalik has been known to give companies money to Polygon got paid, right? Fit here. Vitalik, Polygon, investment may 12 2021 ethereum creator donates meme coins oh no 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 that's not that's that doll do that uh that uh she blah, 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 whatever bull the album code no uh matic Vitalik Polygon investment before. This is how you refine it. Like I showed you, I want it custom. Give me last, give me custom range anytime till, uh, let's say 2020. Let's see. There we go. I had to change it back to Matic, right? Because they're Polygon, but it's Matic. Or a Madigan was Polygon, either way. Um, just donated 300000 in cryptocurrency to three blockchain startups. It's building an Ethereum 2 client called Lysna Prismatic Labs. Spank chain. Do, 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 do. Fine, M A T. Oh uh, no, maybe it is prismatic labs and it became matic. It might be. March twenty twenty. Uh, since its investment, deposits one point four million. Four chain contenders competition for Ethereum. So yeah, blockchain contenders. Yeah, so he gives money to people that in, in, he invests in his network. Like that's just what he does. But besides the point, what I'm saying is they get paid for their time. I'm showing you what I, all the whole point is that this is a development platform. This is not, these are developers on GitHub. Everybody's here developing things. It's not just crypto. There's plenty of other developments that are here. Windows is here. Apple 
code is here. Some of your apps are here. And they're making money. They're here. Why I'm bringing all that up is I want you to understand that you're investing in the technology of another internet. A decentralized internet that happens to be on smaller devices that take up less energy. I don't want a big machine in my, in my house or my offices anymore. I want smaller machines, less power. I want to be able to do more with less power. And I can make way more money that way. It's scalable. I want a scalable business model. So now I need to get to the actual numbers because we've been talking about everything else. So let's start here, right? Let me hit a refresh on this for our total hash rates. And I see that we are tapering off. It's not a sharp drop. We are still losing some energy. That's fine. Again, what it says is China's crackdown has had miners there scrambling to get back uh, to be viable, right? They, they were probably, they most, most of them were skirting the law or in areas where because there's such a big thing or about the how much energy you're using and using coal, they want to control the hash rate of the mining. They want everybody to come into an office and say, I'm in crypto. And these guys for a while were like, yeah, I'm buying a laptop and I'm running Ethereum. I'm running Ethereum. I'm running Ethereum. Energy is bad. Elon Musk. Hey, by the way, I don't think we forgot about you. Energy guys, all these laptops. I have. I showed videos. I showed a text months ago. I was like, yo, these guys are like buying Ethereum laptops and just buying laptops to run Ethereum. And the, the, and you think these uh, Chinese are gonna sit there and just be like, nah, citizens, you gonna get you getting all that bag and I ain't getting none? Hell nah. Boop. They start turning off their machines. That's a good thing because we're gonna start spreading it back across multiple nations and using it, using other energy sources to do this. But also efficiency, uh, efficiency, right? We need uh, we need uh, crypto to be able to run on smaller devices, on those devices that you saw that are coming. Bit, uh, when a Raspberry Pi has 16 gigabytes of RAM in the next two years, or another d device comes running up in the next few years on another, like RISC chips, R-I-S-C dash five chips. When those chips start getting 3D printed everywhere and you can just spin up your own chip, the whole, the, we're in a chip shortage market's gonna be killed. Because people are going to be building their own GPUs and their own ASIC machines. Uh, that When I can build my own machine to run my own coin. Nah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be some time. I'm, that's a five-year to seven-year goal, bruh. Come on now. Everybody, I, I want all of us to be able to pull that one. Not just me. All right, Bitcoin energy, energy consumption. What's this? How many miners are are being plugged in and are running the algorithm, right? Pinging off their machines and being able to see how much the machines are drawing based off of their power consumption. This is what it is doing and it is going up. It means as of March, 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 this March, it has been like, so when... I was telling everybody in February, yo, oh, these GPUs are disappearing. Get ready for the next run. Boop. That's where it happened. Now, boom. We've got that run and we're starting to level off. We're starting to round off just like it did here. Round off and it'll, just, like, it'll be the next step. It did it here. It did, like 2017, right? Look what happened 2017. We went running, running, run, running, running, run, running. 2018, we're running, running. We're running, running, and drop. Wasn't effective anymore. Then from 2019 on, we're just running back up to where we were energy-wise. People started turning back on their machines because it made sense. And we had some stutter stats for some reasons. And then we just keep a running. Now we're running hard. People are buying machines. These machines have to recoup their value. If I buy a machine right now, if I buy a machine right now, I have to recoup. Well, Trash, why are you talking about that? 
What did I just say? $73,000 have gone into Bitcoin miners. They're launching it now. Let me see. Is it building or is it built? Plans to build on May 24th. Yesterday. Announce plans to build a Bitcoin mining facility. The news facility will be housing. Get out my face. Will be uh, new facility will house seventy three thousand ASIC miners. Hmm. So we're not saying how much these ASIC miners are, right? They're going to they ask how much they're going to be spending in energy, right? How much they're going to grow their hash rate to, huh? E hash. I don't even know what that is. I, I know Terra hash. This is, I got to find out what the E H is. That's a whole nother one for me. Right? So now let's do this. 73,000 ASIC miners. So let's say an ASIC miner search 2021. And let's put the word buy. I want to buy one. So let's get the, this guy's calling this the five best ASIC mining rigs, right? So he's saying that the this mining rig is one of the best. Your profitability, blah, blah, blah. So he's saying that this is one of the best ones. So let's just say, do they have a price for it? No, they don't. Let me just do this. Da, 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 da. Do this, search for it, right? Let's close that out. Mm, mm, mm. How much is that going for? Mm, mm, mm. And I don't even think that's it. I'm just saying. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. How much is it? Let's go. Oh, we got to put the word price, right? We got to put the word price in there. Dragon Month 16T. 16T. Uh, let's go here. This might have it. All right, right now, that is the best quote unquote miner. Uh, 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 uh. Profitability. Profit's not that good, actually. That's supposed to be the. See, you can't trust nobody. Come on now. You can't trust nobody. Come on now. Let's, 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 let's not play these games. So, coming soon. But wait, was that the price? Well, that's I mean, that's the, the one they said. Well, you know what? I'm not even gonna trust him. Screw that. We're gonna do this on our own, man. We're gonna do this on our own. We're gonna go with something coming soon because even though they're saying that's what they're going with. Or no, they didn't say that. I said that, that I said that. Right? I just said they were getting ASIC miners. We didn't say which ones they were getting. I just happened to look up somebody that said that that was the best daggone one. So now, nah, my bad. Hold on. What we're going to do is we're going to say that what they'll do maybe is grab the latest and greatest that comes out that's giving you the highest amount of profitability. That's the one we're going to say is going to show up at this one, right? And you can see the profitability of what they say it's going to make for it, which just lets you know that every year you got to get in, right? So... How much will this be? Does it even say income, period, electricity, profit, income a day, electricity a day? And that's just says profitability. But there's nothing that we can see yet because it's new. All right. You know what? Let's just... Um, Let's go with the biggest one now. And uh, I know Ant Miner does Equihash script ET. I'm going to say, what is this, too? I think it's. 
grip, so I don't think that it can do I want to, you know what, we're just going to, let's just get a generalized, because I'll, I'll spend forever doing this. So let's just get a, a minor Ethereum, uh, let's get a Bitcoin minor price, and then get it for 2021, right? Let's just do that. ASIC. Bitwatts releases release the most profitable Bitcoin miner. Okay, Bitwatts. Whatever. Seventh nine. Okay. Visit Bitwatts. Okay. Let's see what they're talking about. Right. All right. All right, so let's say you want, you're building a big old system and you want X amount of miners. You're gonna tell everybody you're getting 73,000 miners. Let's say you're gonna get something like this mid grade miner of 73 of these rather than 73,000 of these, you're getting 73,000 of these or something similar like that, right? Let's see what the price on this middle tier is. Of course not. I need price. This is hard, man. It is damn ridiculous that I can't just find something as simple as give me the damn prices. All right. That's a lot of 10. Okay. So we're talking about a two. All right. So 2000. 17. All right. That's what we'll do. We're going to say. We're going to say two grand. That's what we'll do. We're going to make this mad simple. That's what we're going to do. So then. Mm, 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 comma. Mm, 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 comma. Yep. So that is 146 with an M million dollars potentially purchased in this transaction. And they're doing that this summer, right? They're doing that that it's they announced it now they're going to start building the facility. So they're going to yeah, so they're Starting to build it now. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are starting to put a hundred and forty six million dollars into mining something today. And you think that the market is just is done or anybody else that thinks the market's done when this guy's putting that, they're putting that much money in it. Who puts that much money into real estate? But we even count in the fact that they purchased land and put a facility on top of it to put up the, to put 146 million in, and then you gotta pay for the staff to 
to manage that facility of 73,000 Bitcoin miners only. They're not even talking about what ETH they're gonna have or any other coin that they wanna mine in this facility. They just want you to know how many they're getting in the one thing they want you to know. This facility is not gonna be just Bitcoin. This is what a facility, uh, a typical new Bitcoin mining This is what a Bitcoin mining facility looks like. Racks on racks on racks on racks on racks. That's racks on racks on racks. Racks on racks on racks on racks. Huh? Racks on racks on racks on racks. Huh? Racks on racks on racks on racks on racks. <laughs> Y'all are playing. Y'all are playing. Y'all think this is going away. <laughs> There's people bought a facility like this to 73,000 and they're only telling you about 73,000. What else can I stick in this place? You think if I buy a place like that, I'm only, that's 73,000 might be like a wall. <laughs> they're only telling you what they're doing now. Come on, y'all. They get yeah, playing, man. They're playing. That's what I'm doing with my business. That's how I look at this, man. That's why when I see this going up and I say, yeah, we haven't started. We ain't stopped yet. You think this is today. They are going to do this in May. Let's say it takes them four months to get all the network cabling and everything done or five months, whatever it takes, whatever. This year they get it in play. You think the hash rate is going to go down? No, it goes up. And since they're in Texas, they got wind farms with Bush. What y'all didn't know? This is why I do business. 2016, George W. Bush helped make Texas a clean energy powerhouse. Powerhouse. You're going to be a dip wad right now so I can't really do nothing about that but yeah that's one MIT just wants to block me out because I've been reading some stuff on there behind George Bush the hero of wind energy this is back in again 2012 he's got 8.5 gigawatts of energy S turbine wind farm So he's in the energy business. He's been in the energy business. Wasn't his family in oil? Or the oil legacy of Herbert Walker Bush. President Bush and oil addiction. Arbusto Energy started in 19. Arbusto Energy was an oil and gas exploration firm started in 1977 by former U.S. President George Walker Bush. Daddy. Daddy Bush. I mean, no, no, that's actually, no. George Bush, no, that's George Bush, uh, young George Bush. I'm trying to see if I can, where the hell? 
Arbustal Energy, da, 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 da. George W. Bish. Yep, George Walker Bush. So yeah, so Walker Bush, Herbert Walker's Daddy Bush. Okay, so Daddy Bush and Son Bush, Daddy Bush starts getting the things ready, and right? Son Bush goes ahead and gets himself an exploration company and energy, and now he's doing wind farms. And now you hear of a company getting into energy and creating, um, spending $146 million on it. Right? There. This company. Marathon. Texas. Billionaire Bitcoin critic Ray Dalio buys Bitcoin. Been in the derivatives market. We talked about that, right? That's one of the reasons I looked at derivatives today is because of this guy. <laughs> this guy's been talking crap about Bitcoin forever. But he is leaving fiat now or is it just diversifying? Nah, he's leaving fiat, bruh. Why? He is the newest Bitcoin critic that has turned to embrace the cryptocurrency. It was very negative, negative about Bitcoin. Predicted at one time that the government was going to ban it. You can't ban something that's internationally on a server that can spin up and be on a VPN and you can't see. <laughs> has, have they stopped BitTorrent? No. Pirate Bay still popping up? Yep. Right? There's torrents everywhere. They can't stop that. Why can't they stop it? How can you stop independent machinery that can be tunneled and you can't see it no more? He knew little about Bitcoin at the time when he made the statements, of course. The firm that manages the billionaire's assets, Bridgewater Associates, have kick-started an understudy of cryptocurrency. So now he's trying to learn fast. The firm has over $100 million in assets under management. $100 million, not a big uh, Not a big shot, right? And have concluded their analysis on the digital assets. And he bought. is considered to be one of the biggest hedge funds in the globe to stake on the leading cryptocurrency asset has a hedge against inflation or traditional banking system will be a welcome addition having some money someplace else that everybody that's had that money for the last four years has been able to use this year and last year as a way to say i got some liquidity Hey, Banks, I I'm liquid here. What did Elon Musk do? Hold on, let me show you something. Elon proof Elon Musk says Tesla sold Bitcoin to prove liquidity as a cash alternative because he wasn't making as much <laughs> Elon Tesla sales 2020. Record quality says continues to lose money making video vehicles. Uh -huh. What, what, what? A month ago, Tesla reports record quality quarterly sales. So he is jacking these things out, continues to lose money making vehicles so it is a loss leader we're in the music industry our music was treated as a loss leader what is that it's when you walked into a supermarket and when you used to buy a cd or a tape they used to, it used to be 9.99 well at the store it was ten dollars to the store i know i worked at a store to learn how to get my songs on the shelf that was my hustle well if i need to be here let me work here so I can figure this out. And then what I figured out is I became the receiving manager for the store. <laughs> yeah, that's my hustle. I became the receiving manager to a music store. It was Music Factory? 
no, music factory I worked at. I want to make sure that's the right one. Music factory Atlanta. Yep, musical store. Yep, 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 that's where I work. So I worked at Music Factory. And when I worked at Music Factory, I, I worked as a receiving manager and I was able to see the loss leading, right? $10 that we were paying on it. Now how, then you're selling it for $9.99. That means for every CD or tape you sold, right, you were losing money, period. What you had to do was get somebody to buy a piece of gum at the counter. So that's why you got those counters. Like when you go to the supermarket, there's loss leaders in the building. So what they need to do to pad out the loss leader is to give you a spontaneous item to buy. That's what's at the counter. So you get that spontaneous buy and you might cover a couple of your loss leaders with one sale. If they bought one, now you've got them for another dollar and change to make up for maybe the dollar or, or 10 cents or one penny or 10 or 50 cents you're losing on the product. So it's a loss leader. You're bringing the sales in, but you're losing money on this transaction, but you just want them in the building. I just want you to have a Tesla. I want you to have the logo on your vehicle and drive around and let everybody know Tesla's here but I'm losing money every single time you buy one. So what he did was he posts, let me go back, he gives you a cash out to prove, even though I'm losing money here, I'm making money over here. What am I now gonna do? We're gonna do a three, card molly i'm going to shuffle the cards and say where do you think bitcoin's going up or down and what i'm gonna do is i'm going to create the shills Mm, 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 mm. Conducted. Do, 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 do. They took my damn thing out of the way. I don't like it when you do that. Do, 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 do. Player deals three cards down. Provide setup. Uh, 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 uh. There we go, it's at the top, right? No chance of winning whatsoever at any point in the game. In fact, anyone who has observed winning anything in the game can presume to be a shill. So anybody on the market, which markets we're dealing with, I got a stock market and I have a crypto market. Those are the two markets I'm dealing with right now, right? So on the market, anybody telling me that the stock market is in good shape when they're telling me that this guy from this company lost 10 million and 50 million hurt us bad, but 10, excuse me, 10 billion, Bernie lost 50, this guy lost 10, it's affected some people, and we're still figuring out how much that is, but it seems like it's gonna be 10 billion in losses. Now, I'm supposed to be okay with that when all the while they're telling me Elon and friends are doing a molly on me, right? They're saying, where do you think Bitcoin's gonna go? But the writers, after these guys have dipped the market, they did what we learned over here from Jim Cramer, right? I could push, he could push the stocks higher or lower with as little as $5 million to manipulate the market. We have Elon proving liquidity first. Then Elon saying that Bitcoin is crap, right? Getting it to go down. And now Elon is trying to fix that problem. No, it's going to be greener. It's going to be greener. We already saw it was going to be greener. We already know that. What did he do? He wanted it to go down. 
He three card mollied us. He told us this is not good. It is bad. And everybody sold. He came in and got a basically what I call the past. If we go to the charts, what did he do? He shook the market up here a few weeks ago, right? April 16th and 19th, last week, he shook the market. China came and shook the market, getting it down. That's what he wanted. He actually wanted it here. It ended up going down here. He wasn't expecting that, but he doesn't mind catching it here because that's like going back in time to what year is this? Oh my, What date is this? This is, the, this is February. This is February. The first week of February is this zone right here of 2021. They went back in time and got the market right back where they needed it to get to this. They want to make the money here. And when it goes on a tangent again, because they're all, yeah, we did it. We're back. We're back. Get it, guys. Get it. That's when that next run's going to happen. That was way back here when China fudded the market and then it did this. Fud, dip, fud, dip, China dip, run. China dip, and he had some stutters. Still had one and two before we had a bounce. And this is in the three day, let's go in the monthly. If we go in the monthly, you can really see it. Let's zoom out, All right? If we go into the monthly, we can really, really see it. At that point, right? Actually, no, I want to go to the weekly because it's got a little bit more data. We can actually kind of see these bumps. Bump, 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 run. Froop, 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 froop. Bump. Or, or, or bump. Bump, bump, bump. This seems like a run. It seems like it shot up, but it came back down. Was this a bump? This this bump doesn't look anything anymore, but this bump was me going from 3,000 to 19,000. That was a huge run for me. I was like, holy crap, that's incredible. Right now, Bitcoin is slated to be at $100,000 in this run because of how it's programmed. The investment happens now. The run runs up. And then we have a lull of a few years before the next cycle of the run. How do we know? It happened before, way down here. We just have to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and take it from being weekly to being like a three-day chart and then zoom out a little bit more so that these things look more prevalent, right? But down here, all the way back in 2017, oh, you got to go back further, but you just can't see it. But there was these bump, like these dips. They're not even on the radar. I can't even really do this because the numbers are so crazy now that it doesn't make sense. Let's go to one month and zoom back out. Right? Double click in here so I can get this up zoom out a little bit so right now that was the last run we got up here it went back to where it was but it's that's not a run this ain't a run up that's just getting back to where we were feeling comfortable we felt good about ourselves then we went up here and we blew through a ceiling a significant ceiling blow blew through that and kept breaking breaking our own new ceiling so while this is a run i don't believe it's the run i believe we needed to come back down to at least touch back on one of these before we go back on another run. If I go into the weekly charts, you can see it better. This seems to be a level being created for the next run up. Where are we in the cycle? Energy is tapering off of loss. Energy is going up. We saw 73,000 machines are getting ready to go online. And the fear index, as I, re I refresh it, is still in extreme fear. Be greedy when people are fearful. Be fearful when people are greedy. A motto of Munger and Warren Buffett.
the Oracle of Omaha. So, if I look at what's going on with the wallets on Glassnode, we see today somebody dropped off a little bit. Somebody kicked off a little money in the, what is this? This is the 10K range, huh? Somebody dropped, one person sold a little bit of their assets and they're not in the 10K, they might be in the 9K, right? They're no longer a 10K wallet. Then we just have to look and see whether or not what uh, the other wallets doing, right? So then let's go to the, let's start with the, the big, big dogs, right? That's the 10K wallets, those are the big dogs. We have one person drop down. Let's look at the one the one K wallets. Balance of greater than one K or you keep going up. So we got somebody going up. We got more going up. So somebody just cashed out and went up. Addresses with a hundred Bitcoin in it are going up. So since yesterday. The 23rd, not yesterday, they, uh, it's two days, uh, so they were behind. So on Sunday, when the market was going to hell, it, it was going up. Monday, it's still going up. It went up by another 30 some odd people. The 10K, uh, 10 wallet, 10 Bitcoin in your wallet. That one's still going down a bit. The one Bitcoin in your wallet is still going, it's going up. The 0.01 Bitcoin in your wallet. Are y'all buying the dip? Oh, people are buying the dip. The 0.001, which is the street, is buying. They're coming back in. Our addresses with non-zero balances. The cash out block is still going down. But there's no crazy news, right? Cardano sees largest weekly inflows from institutional managers. Of course they do. I believe I have that in the Discord. JP Morgan sees crypto going to $5 trillion. Jamie Diamond, who said, JP Morgan Chase Chief Executive Dime, Jamie Diamond said he would fire any employee trading Bitcoin for being stupid. Twenty. 17 September 13th see how different three years makes the cryptocurrency won't end well he told an investor conference in New York predicting it would eventually blow up it's a fraud and worse than stupid than tulip bulbs really hmm he's in hmm I wonder why I wonder if it's the fact that all those old derivatives that your money's been spending on is stupid now. Dummy. Cardano sees the law, like I said, it's in here. Seeing the largest weekly inflow. People, this is what a mining facility looks like and they're showing up everywhere in America now. People are building them in their homes. People are building Bitcoin mining home. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on all around you. Let me show you what's happening in homes all around you. I'm not doing it in my house. I'm not running my energy like that. My house is a short to hell circuit. But you don't think people are changing their house? Look at these. These are USB miners. Cranking out for little things. These are the next, that's the next revolution. <laughs> I told y'all, this is what I'm looking at. Not racks on racks of these in the house, but racks on racks of these. Two more years, not in my house, but in a nice little office, off the beaten path. Chilling like a villain with Ritalin. Getting me some free energy from the sky and some wind stuff from uh, from Alibaba. Helix machines, right? Wind farms. I'm showing you the hustle. Y'all gonna pick up on it or not? This is a toxic hustle. Yelling out. Huh? What else we got?
what else I got? I think, I think for the news side of things, I think I'm good on that. Let's go to the crypto bots itself, right? Let's go in and look at these bots. Um, this is our bot from yesterday. I did a training video again. The link is in the description as well as in the, the Musical Geniuses Discord room. Um, this is the bot that we uh, set up with the training and I'm keeping it live, right? So you can see that it's live. Like I said, the link is in the description and you can see that the bot has been training for trading for over 22 hours and 13 minutes. Uh, total made 11 bucks. We put a thousand dollars in. Right now we're just trying to get our revenue up. Um, let me see what the screenshot from yesterday was on that bot. I had $950 in investments. That was what was in there. I've got 951. Right? So we're growing slightly. Um, but that's also the fact that some of these have appreciated in value a bit. But I also have not started a new robot. But I'm not going to do that yet. I want this to kind of play the way it's playing because we're still at the top. And I'm not going to just turn my bot off if we're not. There's no read to be, reason to, to do that. It's at the top of all these trades. That's what I'm looking at. What I'm looking at is I'm scrolling out using the wheel of the mouse. And I'm using this, clicking and dragging with the left key, uh, mouse. And then just looking at my trades, seeing where we are. How much green do I have to that red up top? Red is where I, it's at the top of my price. I don't want to buy. I want to be selling up here. Green, I want to be buying up here. Greens are the buys. Reds are these sells. So I'm buying up and selling off. Buying up, selling off. So as long as it's on the t I have room for that. This one is a little tighter. I don't like it being halfway, but we're not halfway. It can still go back up. And plus, it has played down here before. I'll just let it run. If it does end up trying to pull a dip because something's happening in the market, I'll go by, I'll go after that later. So right now we're looking good. Bots pulling in uh 1% from uh from Coinbase, which is not bad. Right? It's not bad. That for Coinbase, not bad, especially after what we've had with the shake off, right? The shake up. Um, let's look at the other bot, Coinbase bot that we have. I'll actually post the KuCoin bot, of high, uh, the high value bot after this. I'll show you that after this. I have to log out of this screen to show you that bot. So let's just look at this first, make sure we're going good. Uh, our Coinbase bot that we have, this is one of the first ones I did. This is our medium risk bot we're looking at 98 dollars profit we've been running this bot for two days so during that whole crash situation we turned these on i sat here on the weekend and, and did a screen for that you can watch me i was sitting here getting these bots in play during that's why i started working i started working live that's why i started working live just to show y'all in real time how you ride out this this thing that it's not me just training you i'm showing you how i'm functioning and you can make the decision if you want to function like this eth is not triggering for some reason it doesn't seem to be triggering no sales nothing in 21 hours i don't like that so i'm going to reset that uh today let's do that right now while we're looking at it this is what you do i told you i'm working live i'm not going to do that off camera i'm just going to do it right now Click on that, go over to my spots, check out my spot. I might need to just pull a trigger on it and give it a little bit more running room, right? Move this up, move this up. And I'm gonna give it ooh, that one red line. I didn't wanna give it that, but we're gonna give it that. And we're gonna give it 16 and drop this down to 70 just to be cool and it's active now not trailing hold on one second let me just verify something we're good to go just want to make sure that we were going to have a bunch of dogs barking so now that bot is rolling and now i should be getting some trades on that see that's how fast we want to keep on to these things our other boss what's our oldest one our oldest one's down here it's always going to be your newest to your old so i've got my two day right here 
pulling in 13% on Coinbase. That's not bad in BTC, right? 14 bucks has it's been running. This one's done 9%, 7%. On average, we're doing 6.8%. Average daily, right? 3%, 3%. We're doing well. I like this, right? I like this. 9%. What this means is when I purchase, how is it, how much has it gone up? It's gone 9%. We've gotten 10. We're doing well. We're getting some extra percentages. And the thing is, if it dips off, we'll, we'll catch that ride. Catch that ride, right? Catch the ride. Catch the ride. So we're doing well. How far is it up? Let me just look at that since it's an older one. We dip down. We're going to just let it play. It's playing higher than it's playing lower, right? It's playing up here. I'm going to let it keep playing. And I'm not going to touch that. That one's fine. Same as this. It's actually, you can see this is the bot moving up. So it took it 16 grids where we did the trailing up. It moved the bot up and trailed up with the bot. So, hey, it moved up. We're getting some trades there. I'm leaving her be. Let's see what happened with Civic. And this is how I set my robots. I set my robots tight like you see up here with this USDC to ETH. I want more ETH. You're always playing for this side of the trade. This ETH I want, and to do that, I put it that close to the top, right? Like I just showed you. Why do I do that? Why do I shift? Because if it shifts up, I have a longer run. See what I mean? It's for the next run. Up. Mana. Shift it up. This, that's why I do this. Shift it up, and now it's playing longer. I don't have to touch my bots, meaning I get more percentages. I want to set my bots when we're close to a bottom. Turn them off, wait till it bounces, turn them back on, catch some money. Turn them off, get to another bottom, turn them on, get some money. Then if you get a run, leave them alone and let them run up. They're out where they need to be. That's why you micromanage your bots daily. That's what I do. Checking them, just making sure they all look pretty. They followed it up like we wanted it to. We kept it tight, we followed it up. Should be same, kept it, no, actually this one just been playing. Hasn't really moved too much. And this one is the same, because it's, oh, it's still fresh. It hasn't really moved too much, so we're good. These bots are good. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to shut down this screen now, because now I need to open a brand new screen. for the high risk bot, right? We need to make sure that the high risk bot is doing well. So let me get that one loaded up and I'll drag it over here for y'all. I now have my, uh, wait, was this it? Shoot, no, hold on, <laughs> I did the wrong one. Wrong one, <clears throat> that was just the same bot. Um, bot, 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 and it is not the bot we chose, it is the number two bot, not the number three bot. We need bot two, not bot three, because bot two is our high risk bot. There we go. Now we have our high risk bot. All right, our high risk bot is on KuCoin. KuCoin is in the description below. So you can see we set these as well. I'm just looking to make sure what we're doing here, we're doing well, all right? I'm looking at it, just looking at the, the top one is my latest one. My latest one looks good. That's GMB, that's been shaky and it's doing well, 3%. We're doing good with the percentages per day, right? This just makes better percentages. My bot has been running here. This high risk bot has been running for six days down here. Haven't touched it in six days. It's still sitting. That's why I ain't touched it. Sideways, guys. This is what I'm waiting for for the next run. Boom. This is why I'm learning this now. I want to show you this. I hope I didn't close it. I probably did like a dunce. I probably did. Hold on. No, I didn't. Ha, 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 ha. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. Who? Boom. Let me go back to my bot real quick, right? Okay, see this sideways pattern? This, if we scroll out a bit, right? If we scroll out. All right, when the last time this market from 2017, 
March of 2017, like March, right? Like March, right? When the run started, like March, uh, where's December 2019, February, like March, March, the March started, like the March here started. So when this March started, then we got March and we had April, then we had a May run up. Little bit of a May, April, March is dipping. We're gonna have this eight, we're gonna have a little late bloom because we had the crypt, we had another FUD event again, China FUD. So we had another fun event, but we had a little run up and it ran up. But this side, this right here between here, February 2018, 2019 is a whole year. Look at how much it just played down here, played sideways. From 20 July all the way to the, the next to from July, June, from June all the way to November. June and November play sideways. This is where your bots would go crazy. Then it drops. You got to adjust your bots right there. Catch that bottom. Ride. Right. So catch that bottom at December 18th. Ride March, April. Then you just ride it all the way up. Let your bots play sideways, adjust here in this dip. It's gonna play, you're gonna be adjust. You're gonna play, but you're still floating in this little pike. You're just floating, it's really sideways. Boring, little dips you gotta fix, and then this run starts, and this run starts, and this run starts. My bots, I want all this time. And we would just adjust for this. I adjusted for this. Look, I lived through this last crash, right? Let's go to this bot. Since we're here, oh, this ain't turned on. Let me do that. So I got to mix that way you can see it on the uh, chart, right? Let's go to the history, the spot history. I was telling you about futures. You could They can predict the future and break you, right? Right here, these are spots on the day history. Let's go over here. Let's look at the day. Let's look at May as a whole for on the beginning of May when we, right? Like This is when things started crashing, right? Here and last week, right? We started seeing some weakness, right? Boom, let's see what we ended up with. A total profit of 1,724 so far. When the market was going crazy, look at all this red. But look at on the other side of this trade. Yeah, we had a lot of freaking red, but we it was a 1% dip, 11% gain. A 1% dip, 12% gain. 0.9% dip, a 22% gain. So from when I purchased it, it dipped this low, but this is how much it already generated. And all of these are closed bots. So they were running by themselves at the time. 15% dip, 2% gain. 17% dip, 8% gain. That's what you're playing right now. I'm not playing with the, I, I need Bitcoin to be like, I need to hope, I need, I don't do, like I told you, hopium. I'm not high on hopium for Bitcoin. I'm just looking at it practica practically. Where else can I stick money? What else is out here? Automation is automation. What, how many jobs are being automated? Do you think taxis are going to be automated? What happens to the people that are driving those taxis now? They're already being shifted out. Isn't that Uber and Lyft? Well, what's happened with the Uber and Lyft cars that are now being automated? What's going to happen to them? What happens with the fast food people when the robots start taking over those jobs? What happens when you can eat 24 hours a day and just go to a fast food at any time because you can order and it'll just make your stuff fresh on the fly and keep the building clean on the fly that there's no people in the building and it's just clean. What happens when that happens? It's going to happen. I showed you on Alibaba, the machines are there, and the robot code is on GitHub, like I showed you, the code is there for that. Automation codes for robots are sitting right there. People are already programming them. Programming systems for robots are right there. So all this code is gonna come and all of that infrastructure is gonna be on blockchain. You know, decentralized database that I want to put websites on. Yeah, putting applications on it makes sense too. Storing game information, right? If you kill a player in a game like Halo and you want to make sure that all records are there, you have a ledger that's on the back end keeping a track of all the data and that data is is non-fungible. Like, it's, it's locked. 
You can't hack the game for how many, how much money you have in the game because your actual wallet in the game is tied to an actual real wallet. So your game character and your real life character are making the same money. You'll be playing games and building worlds for cash. I'm telling you. I know this. How do I know this? I played Second Life. And I made items in the virtual world and look how awful, not awful, but I mean for its time. This was a while ago. It's like 2005, 2006, right? This is what the worlds were looking like. This is what people were, I was getting paid to make clothes, hip hop clothes in this world. Trying to see whether or not. Ha 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 Yo, it's still here. Soulphotics. That was the company. There was the shoes, the uh, the the all over print shirts, and the sneakers that I was selling in world for. This was a sale item for ten linden. I was like, it was going out of business sale. I was just trying to make some limited edition shoes. I was trying to make some quick guap. They didn't have all of my, uh, it had resize, man. You could resize your shoes, right? That was my hustle. I was selling clothes and all this stuff and I would do giveaways and all that stuff, right? So that was Second Life, right? Hold on. Give me a second. Mm, 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 mm. This wants any game on the planet to hook into its system. They're saying NFTs, but they're, it's just they're using a keyword. But what they're trying to say is that this is, it's a, it's an API. You can have asset distribution so I can send uh, clothes or whatever from a game in there. Event triggers. Trigger asset sending with game app or website events. Huh? I can do something on my website and trigger something. API to this. API. Yeah. Peer-to-peer -peer trading. I can make assets and sell them, whether it be music and or in-game streaming things, I think. I think. Wallet linking, link your wallet, get paid, automated signing, yeah. And then look, the games that are starting, Nine Lives Arena, Age of Rust. Right? I want to make sure I, I want to make sure there's no sound. Right. But look, you just develop what you want to develop and hook it in. Right. It looks great. But jury, that's a lot. But what do I, how do I do it? Unreal. Right. Unreal has a new update. Right. Unreal engine. Right. Boom. You can now basically bring your Unreal assets right in from anything you want, right? Bring it in, make your worlds, put it in Unreal. It's a game. You can build your games and they're making it so you can do it in a non-coding way soon, right? What if this is hooking to... Oops, the wrong one. I th I th uh, where's engine? Did I have it? Did I close it? Unreal. I might have closed it. I mean, it might have been a E N J I N, right? This is what I was saying. So, again, what if I hook this thing? And actually, no, I want to go to images because that's actually dope. Engine. Yeah, if I could hook this thing that allows me to hook into these worlds. 
create these virtual worlds or be in these virtual worlds using these to be able to use these, which I'm going to have to go to their website because they don't really have nothing out here for you to see that. Solutions, games, right? Let's go into games. So evolve your world, right? Evolve your world. Unreal engine you can get running with worlds if you want to get there, right? Terracotta soldiers, y'all know what time we are. Right? And then you got Unity versus Unreal. So you got engines attack each other. Who's going to be winning this war? That's what I'm that's what I'm dealing with. That's what I'm trying to figure out, right? Uh, so I know if I'm looking at crypto, if I'm buying into these coins, I'm buying trying to figure out, hey, you know, what do I really want to be in? What do I want to earn more of? Matic. I, I mean, I want to earn more USDT so I can get more Matic. The more trades I do on this side of the equation is the more I get. This is what I get for supplying this to all of these. I get my money out of that trade and I buy more of whatever it is I actually like and put it in my wallet. Hold it down. Keep it. Get my sprinkles, pack my sprinkles, and keep it. Every time I turn off a bot and I shut it down and I have some sprinkles left over, move into a wallet that I actually like. Then come back in the trade later. Just make sure that whatever sprinkles I get is profit only. Get back my asset to move it into other coins. That's how you keep your stuff free. That's why we're doing the other robot differently. I'm actually, this is a, this is a research pro project, right? For me, this is a research project. Can this, with only a few, like less than, a, no, right now it's less than $1,000 running. Can this grow in time to make enough money? To be past the 1,000 point? How much money is it actually making? How much do we actually have in trades? Do we have more than 1,000 in a month or less than 1,000? That's going to let us know. But I already know because I already have, this is bot number three. I have two more bots running and I want to keep growing that as an asset manager. Now I need to buy more assets. So I need to do more projects. I need to do other than crypto. What else can I do? And that's the next stage is what else can we do to make money? And some of those are going to be in these other arenas i'll show you what i mean i told my business partner ty durden years ago T R T O X I C. oops hold on t-o-x-i-c-h-u-s-t-l-e.com ah there it is like i said i can't type for nothing Boom, right? So see if you can see, see if you can see what I'm beginning to start to do. And I've got a company that can, I can do shoes, right? Right, right. So I can get all over prints. I've already ordered these. I showed in the Discord. I've already gotten these shirts. I've tested them. I'm actually going to wash a few of them to test some more just to make sure they look good. But they're already out for sale. Close that already? Yeah, I think I did. Hold on. Yeah, I closed it already, but I can't even see it. It's fine. But my point is. <clears throat> With what's coming in gaming and what's getting ready to hook in, these APIs, this data-driven stuff, everything hooking in, these machines getting ready to do what they're doing, this, everything is going back to where it needs to be. The market's going where it needs to go. Plain and simple. So I am not tripping about none of this crap, man. I'm not. I refuse. 
And like I said, what with your bots, you're going to be trading in this market. And like I said, look, this bot is trailing up, right? This is Matic. I like Matic. So why not make money on Matic? I'm holding it and I'm making money as it's... Look at... I bought, it bought down here and followed it all the way up here and generated around 13 bucks. Now, you probably would have made more money buying and holding. But I like long term. And plus, I bought it. I did buy and hold. I am buying and holding. But meantime, between time, I'm making money while I wait. Because some of these things ain't popping for another four years and I'm cool waiting. I'll wait. In my portfolio is the coins I want and this is going to buy me more new coins. All right. So I've pretty much gone through my day. I've looked at everything, man. I, I did it live. I did my work for the day. So what I'm going to do is open it up. If anybody got any questions, yeah, got anything you want to say or whatever, man, let's, let's chop it up if you want. I'll give it a minute to catch up. Yep, and the site's getting ready to roll out too. I've got more work to do on it. Um, I am going to be working on a Raspberry Pi project uh, because I want to start working with these. Um, and there's another chip. While well, everybody's talking about the hardware issue, because they're talking about there, there's a shortage. Right. Right. CPU shortage two, two hours ago. Chip shortage, global chip shortage. Right. What's happening is there's going to be a way to fix that problem. And that is risk five. There's already boards for this stuff coming out. Risk five is an open source chip. So just like re uh, the revolution of processors, right? So what's happening unbeknownst to some of y'all is the same way that code has gone online and code is open sourced and you can get code and spit it off to do your own thing and make your own uh, programs and applications. Well, now you can make these chips and you can make your own ASIC chip to build your own types of machines. So you can build your own arm and wrist chips. So like I said, these chips go on these small devices. So what happens when you can print out a chip? What do you mean when that's gonna be years away, trash? <clears throat> do it yourself print 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 uh-huh and there's a coin that does this too but i'm not going in that today because i don't know this enough but there's a coin that does this that handles the maker community i'll leave you with that you'll do your own due diligence on that one huh they can 3d print this stuff now New part day, a RISC-5 CPU for $8. RISC-3D printing, just a reason. RISC-5 and 3D printing. RISC-5, this is a Reddit board for RISC-5 and 3D printing. They're, they're, people are starting to test. Alibaba releases first RISC-5 CPU as open source solution. Alibaba, you know the company that...
Uh huh. The company that has these that you can buy, twenty-two thousand to forty-one thousand, fifteen thousand. Let's uh no, I, I don't wanna be robot toys. That's not the industry I'm really caring about. High quality Fanku robot. Fanook, excuse me, Fan Fan Fanook. Robot arm, OEM, factory, cheap. Twenty eight thousand cheaper ones that do specific things, little light ones. You got swing arms, you've got this robot arm for nine to twenty one thousand. Do you think the price is gonna go up and down? as more and more people can manufacture this. Booths for arms, the Amazon robot arms, the arms that you see in the Tesla factories and all these other places. Where do you think they're getting them from? What do you think runs this? People are just now coming up with their own parts to their own boards and they're beginning to come up with, if you have an idea and you're smarter than these people that think they're so damn smart, that they can step up. They can step up and get right into it. That's why I mean, like, come on, man. You can put whatever programming language. I showed you GitHub has Bitcoin as a programming language sitting there. Could you not stick co code into any of these things on any of these boards and run whatever the hell you want down the line as the technology comes down to you? Yeah, prepare, man. Because a revolution of low code, no code is already here. Low code, no code, All right? Let's go to news. Prepping for the no code and low code age of law. So they're gonna do that for lawyers. Keys to selecting a low code platform. Low code, Salesforce is bringing low code. Low code, developer jobs. Low code, RPA, that is uh, uh, RPA. Robotic process automation and artificial intelligence. Robotic process automation is like saying macros or robots on a desktop. Microsoft is got GPT3, which is AI that Elon Musk started and walked away from that scaring people. Now that you code in a natural language. You can code in a natural language, just talking. And it'll build applications for you. I want an application that looks like Google. It'll build it. That's what you're dealing with. That's what's coming. The hardware is going to, is coming down to that you can manufacture your own hardware, put it in your own like your own boards, put it in your own robot, run your own code on it, and do what the hell you want. So what if I get robots to 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 be in a small little kitchen and have it manufacture food, and then I track all of that data on the blockchain to make sure all my robots in multiple chains across multiple states and countries are all running efficiently, or if I need to update them, I can do it like Bitcoin does in this signal updates to the chain that's why i said you don't look at bitcoin as a uh, as a uh, speculative stock play i'm not playing with stocks i am playing with technology that is all that is full-fledged assets all right so i'm pretty much done from what I can see from my day. I'm about to go get the rest of my day done and really started. I've got some client work to do, but I wanted to get my morning crypto work out of the way and I decided to record it. So I want to thank everybody for chilling out with me. If you showed up and I appreciate you, um, you know, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Uh, I, I appreciate all of you. So I'm, I'll be back because I'm going to be working again. I work every day. Y'all be safe. Peace.